This is the world's lightest Rubik's Cube, coming in at a mere 26 grams. Whereas this monstrosity, which gives you a finger workout every time you touch it, is the world's heaviest Rubik's Cube, at 953 grams. Or is it? Well first you have to define what you mean by world's heaviest Rubik's Cube. Of course, it has to be a fully functional 3x3, which this cube is, but I mean, so is this cube, which weighs over twice as much and doesn't even fit in the camera frame. So obviously, we also have to specify the size. In order to be considered the world's heaviest Rubik's Cube, it can't be any bigger than a normal sized Rubik's Cube, which is 57 millimeters. As you can see, this one is a little bit smaller at just over 56 millimeters. So now that we have a really solid definition, is this the world's heaviest Rubik's Cube? Well, no, it actually isn't. But to explain to you how someone made a heavier one, and more importantly, how I'm gonna beat them, we need to talk a little bit about density. Now a standard Rubik's Cube is made out of plastic, which has a density of about one gram per cubic centimeter. What that means is if you were to get a solid one centimeter cube of plastic, it would weigh about one gram, as you can see. Now if you multiply that density by the volume of a Rubik's Cube, that tells you that a solid plastic Rubik's Cube would weigh around 185 grams. Of course, a real Rubik's Cube is going to weigh a little bit less than that because it's not made out of solid plastic, there's a lot of empty space on the inside. Now on the complete other end of the spectrum, the world's densest element is called osmium at over 22 grams per cubic centimeter. That means if you had a solid 1 centimeter cube of osmium, it would weigh over 22 times as much as this little plastic one. A solid osmium Rubik's Cube would weigh an insane 4,000 grams. But unfortunately, even if it were possible to make a solid osmium Rubik's Cube, the raw material alone would cost well over $100,000, so that is squarely off the table. So how about a more practical metal like steel, which comes in at 8 grams per cubic centimeter? Well, a solid steel Rubik's Cube would weigh over 1,400 grams, which is already more than my record of 953. And sure enough, before I even made my cube, somebody had already made a fully functional, normal-sized Rubik's Cube made out of solid stainless steel. It's actually very impressive, there's a whole write-up about how I did it, which I'll link below, but the important part is, I was beat before I even started. So today, we're gonna take that crown once and for all, by making this Rubik's Cube weigh, well, at least 1,400 grams. But first, we're going to need a denser metal. Luckily, there is a metal that's a lot cheaper than osmium, but still has an extremely high density of over 19 grams per cubic centimeter. And that metal is tungsten. A solid tungsten Rubik's Cube would still weigh over 3,500 grams, but unfortunately, being a very hard metal and having a melting point of over 6,000 degrees, it would be very hard to shape Rubik's Cube pieces out of pure tungsten. But because tungsten is just so dense, that doesn't really matter, because we can just take a normal plastic Rubik's Cube and then shove as much tungsten inside as physically possible. And that's basically exactly what I did with this ultra heavy Rubik's Cube. I was able to fit eight of these little tungsten cubes inside every single edge and corner with room to spare. In fact, let me open it up and show you. Now I chose a cube with very spacious pieces, which means those eight tungsten cubes fit very easily. So the one really unfortunate part about that video is that we actually had a lot of room to spare. Obviously not enough room to fit an extra tungsten cube, but I felt like I had to put something else in there. And so I actually came up with these little metal pieces and a random coin down there on the bottom just to take up a bit of that empty space. But obviously these things being circular and made out of other metals, they're a lot less efficient in being really heavy than tungsten cubes. So if I wanna make this cube even heavier and I can't fit any more big tungsten cubes, well, then the obvious solution is small tungsten cubes. That's right, I have bought even more tungsten, over 1200 of these little tiny cubes. I'm gonna be going through every single piece on this cube, removing all the coins and little bits of metal and replacing all of that empty space with tungsten. But let's back up a minute because this is not gonna be as easy as it sounds. For one thing, adding all those little tungsten cubes into these pieces is going to be very tight. As you can see with just the eight big tungsten cubes right now, they don't quite lay flat inside the edge piece. That's because on the inside of every piece, there's a little plastic bump right here sticking out for absolutely no reason. So we're definitely gonna have to sand that down on all of them. Also, we have all these little plastic ridges which hold the cap onto the piece. Those are all gonna have to be chopped off and the cap is going to be glued on in the end. In fact, let me really quickly modify one of these edge pieces and show you exactly what the end product is gonna look like. So here's a fully modified edge. As you can see, those eight big cubes are now lying perfectly flat against the wall, and that lets us fit an additional 32 of the little cubes around the edges. We can also fit another 16 right on top, and that barely allows us to fit this modified edge cap right on top. Oh, and technically there is still a little bit of empty space right there. So if I'm feeling adventurous, I might also add a bit of this super heavy tungsten putty that I bought right into those little cracks. But just to give you an idea of how insanely heavy this edge piece packed with tungsten is, it weighs 64 grams, which is slightly more than a lightweight speed cube like the Gain 11M Pro. This edge piece weighs more than this entire cube. 
Crazy, right? And that's just the edges. We can also do the exact same mod on all the corners and fit the same amount of tungsten in all of these. And that's not even to mention all the room we have left over inside the center pieces. Last time, I just shoved a bunch of magnets down inside there, which obviously aren't that heavy. So this time I'm gonna take all those out and then try and remove as much plastic as possible from around the screw. And then my goal is to fit at least four of these big tungsten cubes right on top of where the screw is, or at least a smattering of these little ones. And as if that weren't enough tungsten already, I also custom made my own tungsten core to replace this one with. Basically, I just took a normal core like this and glued little tungsten cubes all over the outside, and this thing is already very heavy. So yeah, I have not neglected even the most unthinkable of components. Every single piece of this cube is going to be jammed full of tungsten, and I am going to get that record. So let's go ahead and start this insane time lapse. And here are the finished pieces of what should hopefully be the world's heaviest cube. The edges and corners went exactly to plan. I even managed to fit that extra tungsten putty in all the little gaps, so I could not be happier with these. They are ridiculously heavy. The center pieces were a bit more of an adventure because I didn't really have a plan going into it, but after removing all the excess plastic, I realized that I could just perfectly fit four of these big tungsten cubes, as well as a handful of little ones, while the screw just perfectly fit right down the middle. There wasn't any extra room for a spring down there, so instead I just stuck a tiny little segment of a spring right on top. It looks kind of funny, but it still serves its purpose. The centerpieces are allowed to flex just a little bit outwards, and it actually takes a lot of force to pull them out now because you're compressing those little springs completely, but that's actually exactly what you want in a super heavy cube like this because otherwise the mass of the pieces would just overwhelm the springs and it would just kind of feel floppy. We also got pretty lucky with the center caps. As you can see, we could just perfectly fit 12 little cubes around each one, and that gives you just enough clearance to fit right over the screw and just enough depth that the center cap fits on perfectly. In fact, the tolerances were so tight, I think the center caps might actually be sticking out by like a fraction of a millimeter, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Either way, let's check it out by getting this cube assembled. Okay, here's the assembled cube. I actually went ahead and glued on all the center caps because it turns out when you add weights to them, they fall off pretty easily. Like I mentioned, they do stick up a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but you can definitely feel it. But you know what? As long as the cube is still less than 57 millimeters, I don't think I really care. So let's go ahead and measure it real quick from center to center. And we got... 57 millimeters, sounds good to me. Now you may have noticed I've been avoiding picking up this cube. That's not me being suspenseful. The truth is, it's just really tiring to hold. To prove that point and to try out the turning, let's try and do a quick solve. Okay, I just did some inspection. So let's go ahead and begin in three, two, one, go. By the way, I'm really not joking about this cube being super tiring to hold. It legitimately is easier to just leave it sitting on the table like this. Obviously, sometimes you do have to do an algorithm and pick it up, but either way, it's gonna give you quite the finger workout. I do think those super strong springs definitely helped out a lot. It makes everything feel a little more fluid and helps you take advantage of that tiny bit of corner cutting. And I think I did a good job of making this cube turn about as well as it possibly could, given how heavy it is. So let's see if we can do a fancy algorithm like this. And wow, I actually managed to do that one. And we have a nice easy A perm to finish things off. And there we go. Wow, even from just holding that cube for 10 seconds, my hands are already tired. But the real question is, just how heavy is the end result? Remember the previous version of this cube was 953 grams and the weight to beat is 1400 grams. So let's set it on the scale. 1574. So I would say that handily beats the record for the world's heaviest standard size fully functional 3x3 Rubik's Cube. And just to give you an idea of how heavy that really is, let me compare it to a few standard weight 3x3s. And by a few, I mean 24. That's how many normal 3x3s we need to even get close to the weight of this one. And in fact, we actually need a 25th cube to surpass it. That's more cubes than even fit inside the camera frame. Here's a better look at them all. This is two layers deep and all of this is still lighter than this is. So yeah, this is probably the most insane 3x3 I have ever touched, the world's heaviest Rubik's Cube. I hope you all have enjoyed the process of making it and improving upon it as much as I have, but that's pretty much it, and I'll see you guys next time.